No fucking clue. Uh, how the fuck? Really fucking easy. This guy also fucks up. Oh, fucking hell. A fucking fucking hell. He just keeps playing these fucking enchantments. Some weird fucking decks, and they don't seem to know how to play them. All right, that's it. Here's the theme tune. Oh, excuse me, just having a quick sip of water there. Got a long day of talking ahead of me. I'm the man wizard chose today. Just going to fire straight in. Get back on that ladder. Let's see if we can't get us a few quick wins. I'm also going to try and be a little bit better about my foul, foul language. Oh, fuck. So... Uh, pretty good opening hand here, you know, I got my uh, mana acceleration, uh, got a couple of solutions, uh, and Vivian at the top. But this is a mono-red aggro deck that I'm playing against here, and you have to be very, very careful, because you can lose pretty easily to a deck like this. You know, they can flash out enormous damage. With, with Embercleave and with Torbrun, you know, you can go from having nothing on the board to being able to do, you know, 16, 18 damage in a single turn. So what you absolutely don't want to do against a deck like this is make incredibly aggressive early trades like, like I do in this. Because... Um, <laughs> Because there's, there's no point. You're going to see me play this this match incredibly poorly and culminate in a series of decisions that will leave you uh, tearing your entire nether regions off and hurling them into orbit out of frustration. And and all these poor decisions center around this this fella here. This um, this legendary enchantment creature because you'll see i actually have a way of dealing with this guy i've got a return to nature and one of the nice um features of return to nature which i only really put in the deck for sort of general utility is a lot of these theros uh, meta decks depend quite heavily on um on enchantment creatures which means you can really throw a spanner in the works by for instance, destroying this one that's attacking me now. Destroy it now. Jordan, pass Jordan. Get rid of it now. Get rid of it now. Before Get, get rid of it now. But I don't. I don't. I don't. I keep playing like a normal green match thinking I, I, can, I can just gradually control the board and eventually I'll get enough advantage to be sort of whittling down. And um, and I think to myself, well, look, right now, the threat to me is the uh, the Scorch Spitter. It's the only thing that can trigger Cavalcade. And I can't let him get two Cavalcades off, so I'll just, I'll just chomp him. And, you know, if I get rid of it, then... Um, there won't be a 1-1 one, one on the board to uh, to trigger his terrible enchantments. Uh, except... Uh, I've, I've completely ignored this. this in, look, look, look there, there I am, thinking about it, and instead I do something really stupid. Because um, this, uh, this legendary enchantment man, of course, he just brings him back. There he goes, doing his job. Of, so I, that's it. I've wasted a card there. That's terrible. And you, the sad part about watching this again is that that isn't even the move that loses me the game. That's that's not the bad one. <laughs> that that is a relatively poor fuck up. Uh, there's a really high quality one coming later. Look, I've even scouted that he's got Torbrun in his hand. There's no excuse for me to lose this. Uh, because I've got eight damage on the board. And you'll notice that, that I don't notice, that these plus ones he's summoning are 
are um, unable to block. So look at this, right? This is a prime example of convincing yourself you're going to lose and focusing so hard on trying not to lose that you miss the fact that you could win. Look, I've got... Now out with, with Vivian now, I've got 10 damage on the board. All I need to do is destroy that enchantment creature and he'll have nothing that can block. But I'm so terrified of the of the next turn after this one. I don't even try and win in this turn. So this is me. This is me clutching defeat from the jaws of victory. Cause like now what do I do? I'm looking at these creatures going, oh, oh no. <laughs> I've made a terrible error. And um I just end up I think I just end up return to naturing one of the cavalcades. Like like that'll help me. Because I can't block, you know, what is that? Two, four, no, that's three, six, nine. I can't block 15 damage with one creature, so I've just, I've lost, that's it. I've lost, I've lost. I told myself I was going to lose, I've been playing defensively, and, you know, I get, I get what I deserve. And that's one of the advantages, I suppose, of, um, there we go, of, um, of watching these back, because I didn't catch that mistake the first time. And I would have thought to myself, oh, it's a red deck, I'm doomed, I I'll just give up. And that's an important lesson to learn, you know, it's never over uh, if, as long as you pay attention. Um, unfortunately, as you can see here, that's not a lesson that I learned at the time, because here's me getting hosed by exactly the same deck again, immediately afterwards. And that's just how it is on best of one, you know. The, those sort of decks do really well because you can't prepare for them. You know, it just goes to show you, as long as you've got your, your head in the game, you can you can pull back um, a win from even the most seemingly gloomy of defeats. And a, and a, a better editor would have put an example of that in the video. Um, but unfortunately, my next match was a was against a mono white soldier deck, so uh, it, it goes pretty much exactly how you'd expect. Uh, I play a bunch of creatures. He plays a bunch of creatures. Chris Patel here, wasting six minutes of my life that I will never get back. Um, yeah, he builds a wall. I build a wall. We bounce off each other, and then there's there's not. Uh, then the creatures go. Then they come back. It takes fucking ages. It takes ages. It's four times faster, so I think I'll just cut to, to... There we go. Cut to me winning. That'll do. Um, hopefully the next game will, will be more illustrative. Uh, one thing I've noticed at, at this level is... Uh, no, that won't, that won't work. There we go. One thing I've noticed at this level is people tend to put their, um, their faces... Uh, on the face, they put their faces on. What the hell am I talking about? They put their avatars on uh, in a way that will match what deck they're playing, so you can kind of scout it out. I think people, when they get up here, are very proud that they've managed to reach not diamond, and so um, they they want to boast about it with a with a badass picture of Liliana. But um, I choose Khan's passionless featureless visage to hide the fact that I'm playing a kind of aggressive green deck. And, oh, right, let me explain my choice just then. Um, <laughs> I'm busy waffling about aesthetics. Uh, this, I, I would never usually play Vivian that early just to chomp a baddie. But I thought to myself, yeah, there we go. I thought, he's, he's just going to murderous ride in my planeswalker anyway, so there's no point in keeping it. Like, in terms of of momentum and card advantage, better to just, you know, use it as a, an expensive and elaborate, you know, uh, chomp than, than anticipate building my, my game around it. This is, again, quite a poor video for educating people on how to get through uh, Platinum because um, from this point on he kind of just walks into every trap that I have like that 3-3 three, three flyer is perfect harpooner fodder uh, I'll just sneak out a pelt collector first because um, 
again, this deck is all about building up big monsters and you've always got to be thinking ahead. Uh, but against, you know, uh, mono black when they're attacking my hand, very, very bad. Vampires and zombies and stuff, I, I'm I'm pretty au fait against beating now. Um, except here where <laughs> I can't add up <laughs> and end up just giving him two extra life. <laughs> That in my head, that there we go, the uh, the the rare sincere oops. In my head, uh, that was supposed to be th a three four and just flatten him. Uh, at once, this is a game that is playing to my absolute uh, strengths, and I still managed to nearly botch it. But like a great many matches that uh, that I've experienced, this tends this ends with me flashing out questing beast with a uh, with a giant growth. Which seems a bit cheap, but then again, I did put it in the deck specifically to deal with those sort of one-one, two-two death touch creatures that you get against you get in black decks a lot. So I feel it's kind of an appropriate win for me to just top deck a questing beast. It just goes to show that I made a good deck. So six-three, we've managed to drag ourselves back up to where we were at the start of the session. <laughs> In, in a scant 20 minutes. So I'm quite keen to win this one. Uh, it's a real pisser to just play game after game and feel like you're making no progress. Especially off the back of the, you know, unbelievable 90% win rate that got me to this point. So, pretty typical opening. Nice big wall of creatures. And, um, again, I don't know how useful this is going to be if you're watching this at home, because I win this one because um, Endust here doesn't play any creatures at, at all. I mean, he summons a zombie, so just let me just pause the video here so you can do a quick tally. Uh, I have 3, 6, 7, 8, 12 damage on the board, and he has a 1-1 one, one zombie token <laughs> creature. <laughs> uh, that's it. Another another 5 matches, making incremental progress upwards. Uh, what have we learned today? We've learned that um, I win against decks that aren't mono red aggro decks i lose against mono red aggro decks and if i'm playing against mono red aggro decks i guess i should be more cautious and try and scout out their um big cards like torben and, and embercleave and, and keep a solution to them i don't know that's a bit long-winded for an outro let's try again uh red blows